We're continuing today, and we're going to talk about Ohm's Law. So, just as a quick review, we said this was a battery. Let's go with our handy-dandy 6-volt battery. That's a resistor. And current runs through the wire. Let's say the resistance of this is 12 ohms. That's something we need to remember. Resistance is measured in ohms. Now, we can use our resistivity formula to find that, but let's just say we already know the resistance of this material. <clears throat> now, if we remember, we said that current is going to run from the positive end of the battery through the resistor, through the wires, and back towards the negative end of the battery. And current is the movement of charges. We need to remember again that current goes from positive to negative, and we need to remind ourselves at the same time that electrons go from negative. positive. <laughs> now that's just how things work. Ohm's law is going to give us a good way to calculate how much the current is. Okay. Now, um, we said a couple of things in class. One of them was that if we take our same 6 volt battery and instead hook it up to a bigger resistor, let's say we have 24 ohms, we're going to get less current. Because it becomes harder to push charges through the circuit. And if we take this same circuit, either one of these circuits, and, and make the battery bigger, let's say to 12 volts, and all those lines connect up and 12 ohms current is going to increase because we have more push and we can move charges around more easily because we're pushing these charges harder and taking these two things into account this tells me that current goes down when resistance goes up and this tell me tells me that current goes up when voltage goes up putting those two together we get ohm's law which tells me that current is equal to um, voltage divided by resistance and that gives me the same relationship that we had and the way we generally tend to write this is voltage equals current times resistance. Every now and then we'll see someone trying to graph stuff like this. And the graph goes with this equation where we have um, voltage here and current here. And what we actually see is resistance as the slope. We're not going to do we're not going to do an experiment to get this or anything, but it's a, it's a good graph to know um, because basically that's how most equations work. Anyway, so that's Ohm's law. It's a way to find current. So Ohm's law is voltage equals current times resistance. And it's sort of, it goes along with what we were talking about, but it's going to allow us to put numbers on stuff. Now, I want to look at a circuit and talk about the energy through that circuit. So we have the voltage here, and let's say it's 6 volts.
and we have the resistance here and we'll make it 12 ohms again and I want to talk about energy for a little bit um, the battery stores energy okay and so when the battery pushes charges it gives them energy so all the charges along this line are energetic energetic they have received this potential each charge has received six volts of potential from the battery now what happens as it moves through the resistor is that it loses all of that energy so my charges lose energy at a resistor. Now light bulbs we played with in class don't really get hot that much but if you go touch an incandescent bulb at your house that's a resistor that has current running through it that thing gets hot and that heat is that resistor losing heat energy and that, that energy comes from the electricity in the wall works the same way in a circuit like this. The light energy that we see coming from a bulb uh, comes from this battery. So when we look at the other end, the other side of my, my circuit, we have no more energy. So, the battery gives the particles energy, the particles lose energy at the resistor, and they're pushed back to the battery with no more energy. They're not charged up anymore. At the resistor, we, we lost all of that stored energy. Now, now power is how we refer to it. Um, power is current times voltage. Um, so what that means here, well I don't have current yet, so we have to do Ohm's law first. So here the current is 6 volts divided by 12 ohms. Well that's 0 0.5 amps. So I have half an amp of current. Um, that means through any given point of this we have 0.5 coulombs going by moving through a spot in one second. So, if we're going to look at power for this circuit, it's going to be 0.5 coulombs per second. Again, that's an amp times 6 volts, uh, giving me 3. And if we look at this, it's coulombs per second times volts, which is uh, joules per coulomb. That leaves me with joules per second which is a watt. Because it's a constantly flowing system, we don't talk about energy as in three joules of energy was lost. We talk about it in power. Three joules of energy per second is lost at the resistor. Uh, because I'm going to lose more energy the longer I put this on. So this is... Um, it's power. Another way we're going to say that is the rate of energy dissipation. We are lo losing three joules of energy every second that that thing is on. Power is a really easy thing to do. Um, and we can write it multiple ways. One, P equals IV. And if we substitute V equals IR into this, it's P equals I squared R, and if we plug in, um, well, there's also voltage over voltage squared over resistance. Any of these things is going to give me the same quantity as power. Um, depending on what you're given, you can use this. Resistors in series. Now, unfortunately, things don't always stay as simple as we want them to. So if we have a 10 volt battery. What we're going to do is put 
Not just one. But two resistors on here. And we're gonna we're gonna say that each one of these resistors is we'll say that one's two ohms. And we'll say this one's eight ohms, just to have fun with it. Now looking at this, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep a list of reminders. One is that current current is constant. Current is constant in a loop. That means if we look at how charges are moving in this part of the loop compared to this part of the loop compared to this part of the loop, that current is the same at all points. We don't have more current here, less here, and less here. Because it's chock full of electrons, it's chock full of charges, and if I push one charge here, it's going to move all of the charges all the way through this. Now, the difference we see is that charges here have a whole lot of energy from our battery. Charges here have 10 volts of energy. And as they go through here, they lose some, not all, of that 10 volts. And we're gonna look at how much here in a second. So then the charges here have a little bit less energy than the charges here. And as they go across the 8 ohm resistor, they lose all of their voltage. So that when they go back, as they're coming this way, charges in this bit of the wire only have zero volts of electricity. So what happens, they're moving the same all the way throughout, but we drop off some energy here, then we drop off some more energy here. So we're going to look at how to analyze this circuit so we can see just how much voltage they're dropping off at each thing. Well, the first thing we need to do is, is think of this particle. It's experiencing 2 ohms and then 8 ohms of resistance. And we'll prove this a different way later, but we could say that the total resistance of this circuit is 10 ohms. Each particle is going to experience, as they move through the circuit, 10 ohms um, of resistance. So really, we could redraw this circuit as the 10 volt battery attached to not two, but just one resistor that happens to be 10 ohms. And looking at that, the current is going to be the voltage divided by the resistance uh, 10 volts divided by 10 ohms. So total, the current in this thing is 1 amp. And what that means for us is that at every point, at all of these points, the current is 1 amp all the way through. Because the current in a loop is constant. Now, what we can do is at this first resistor just look at what happens right here we know we're going to lose some voltage well that voltage is going to be equal to the current through that resistor times its resistance that current's going to be equal to I'm sorry that voltage is going to be equal to 1 amp times 2 ohms which gives me 2 volts that means we start off with 10 volts we lose 2 volts here and so at this point, we got 8 volts. We've lost some of our energy. We're going to lose the rest of it over this resistor. And if we wanted to, we could calculate that out. This voltage is equal to current, 1 amp, times 8 ohms. That means I'm going to lose 8 volts across that resistor bringing me down to zero volts, getting me back to the battery. We'll spend some more time talking about how this works uh, in class on Monday, but this is the basics of resistors in series.